Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Monster Card Boulevard. This is the first edition of the game. It's for two to four players. It takes about 25 to 35 minutes to play the game, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Monster Card Boulevard, you're going to be playing, I guess, as an evil scientist or somebody who controls a certain section of Monster Card Boulevard, in which you're going to be getting a stack of cards to look through. Now, everybody's going to get a certain portion of the deck and pull out cards based on the number of players in a two-player game it's eight, and in a three-player game it's seven, and so on and so forth. And then you're going to pull cards out. So you're like, okay, uh, this is for you, this is for me, or I'm gonna go through the deck, pick out the cards I want based on the number of players, and then you're gonna take the rest of the cards, shuffle them up, and then put them down in a drawing pile. On your turn, you're simply going to play a card. Usually playing a card is going to result in gaining points, and you're going to keep these points separated in each of the different types of suits. As such games like Evil Overlord and whatnot, you're going to be trying to score the most points at the end of the round. However, in this game, instead of a marketing phase, you're going to be basically using cards that do take that actions from your hand, and you have the chosen cards at the beginning, which is basically like the free-for-all draft. And then after that, every single round is going to, to uh, involve you drawing cards from the top of your deck and continuing the game. You're going to be trying to win certain amounts of rounds, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most points scored based on the number of rounds they've taken part in is going to be the winner of the game, Monster Card Boulevard. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the components are and how the setup works. So here we have the game Monster Card Boulevard and what you're going to be getting. First of all, you get the little box and you're going to be getting the rule book along with a big stack of cards. The uh, cards in the game are going to range from different types of cards. You've got the circus people, you got the pumpkins, you got the witches, all kinds of different types here. And all the cards are going to be different, but they basically have a power on them. And that's the main aspects of what you're going to be getting in the game. Here's a look over the inside of the box and whatnot. Uh, now let's go ahead and show you the setup of the game. In a two player game, you get eight cards in your hand, but you're going to divvy up the deck equally. Now, you're usually going to have to go ahead and deal them out to each player until the entire deck has been resolved, but to save time, we're just going to cut it in half like that. Then, players are going to look through their entire deck of cards and choose the cards they want to put into their hand. For instance, if you want that card, you can put that one in, and that card, and maybe you want these guys here, and depending on the number of players. So, in a two-player game, it's eight cards, in a three-player game, it's six, and then in a four-player game, it's five cards. After you've gotten the allotted amount of cards you needed from the deck, you're going to take the rest of the deck and shuffle it up, and that will be your deck for the rest of the game. The same will go on for the other player as well. Oh, right there. And then you're going to go ahead and set this deck oh, as well. Make sure you give it a good shuffle. Then uh, that is the basic aspects of setup. You're going to take these cards and put them into your hand and you'll be using them for the game. Let's talk about how the game functions. All right, so you've got your hand of cards being the number of players. We've got a two player game here. So I've got eight cards and you're going to be playing them on your turn. It's pretty simple. After you drafted from your deck, you have your deck next to you and everybody else has their own. You play a card, they play a card, they play a card and they'll go around in a circle until all cards have been, uh, you've been chosen to play your cards. You can choose to pass and not play anymore if you'd like. And once everybody has chosen to pass or run out of cards, the round is going to end and whoever has the most points in front of them is the winner. There's also some cool stuff like these Illuminati cards here. This one's Ripper the Dirty Looks Giver and he actually will remove all Illuminati cards from every other player's hand. So you know somebody's likely to dig this guy up. These Illuminati cards are very, very good. And if you start the game with them in your hand, it's likely that you're going to get them removed. So maybe you don't want to start with them. Maybe you do. It's kind of a risk you can choose to take. After you've chosen to pass and everybody else has passed or removed all their cards, uh, you're going to count the points in front of you and whoever has the most points at the end of the round is the winner. After that, the next round is going to begin and you're going to just simply draw three cards into your hand. If you have no cards, you'll just have three. And if you have extra cards from the last round, you're going to add that up to your total. And the rounds will continue as such. Uh, you can play up to a certain amount of rounds. The rules kind of give you a flavor of how many rounds you can play up to. I would suggest probably uh, two or three rounds, I suppose. But that's the basic idea of the game. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like and how it functions. So back to the board again. And as you can see, we've got both decks of cards. We went ahead and separated the decks for each player. And they went ahead and drafted their own hand from their deck. They then shuffled both of these decks and set them aside for different rounds. This is going to be the box. We'll set it over here. And these I've actually shown you guys, but in general, players are going to only be able to look at their own hands. Uh, the person who's the most monstrous like will go ahead and start the game. And so we are going to go ahead and begin with this guy here. He's the most monstrous looking. And on his turn, he simply is going to play a card from his hand. He's got this guy right here, the Ripper, the Dirty Looks Giver. He's going to play this card for sure. And why? Because he doesn't have any other Illuminati cards 
cards because he's going to try and remove Illuminati cards from his opponents. And it so happens that this guy does have one, so this card is actually going to be discarded, and these are going to go. So these are useless now. Then this player is going to get a chance to go. This guy's going to play the Walker Texas Stalker. Now that's a six point card, but it has a multiplier of times two, which means if he has the other guy or other guys, he's going to be able to multiply the cards. So for instance, right here, Booker the Contraction <laughs> Contraction Worker Lurker is actually going to score him 12 and 12 as opposed to just six, but he has to have both. Okay, so he's got these. He's got this guy in play, and this guy is now up to bat, and he will simply play Grim Low Min Ninja Assassin. That's an eight versus the six, and this guy's going to go on. He's going to score the kill right here for 12 points apiece. That's 24. Now this player's turn here. He actually can play something interesting. He can go ahead and play Clyde the Five-Eyed Spy, giving this to another player and then allowing him to take two cards from his opponent's deck. Now it is now his turn. He's got his 24, 25, 26, 27, 20, 29 points. Uh, he can choose if he wants to pass, but if he does that, it leaves risk for his opponent to go ahead and score. So maybe he's going to want to go ahead and play one more card here. And he'll play this one here. Um, and unfortunately, because he played this card, I believe, nope, nope, he's okay for, for this one, actually. Uh, this guy can go ahead and say, hmm, what do I want to do? Okay, actually, I'm going to pass. And at this point, if he passes, it's likely he's going to pass as well, because the round is going to end, and this guy is going to score. Eight versus his points. He's got 24 here, 27, 29, 36 points. These guys are all going to go into the graveyard, and he is going to score one point. Then the next round is going to begin, and players are going to draw three cards from their deck. They're just going to simply pull them like that, and this player as well will do the same. He got some interesting stuff, and this guy actually got really one of the really powerful Illuminati cards. He got Nine Limb Jim. Draw from an opponent's discard pile until you have nine cards from your hand. That's pretty good. But uh, he's going to simply go ahead and play a card. He'll go ahead and play this one right here. This is the hilarious, delirious, historic Yorick. And in response, this guy can go ahead and play the Monster Slayer, the Critic, which will destroy all um, uh, monsters on the opponent's side of the field that have the same type. And that's got a little symbol here. Next player is going to go ahead and choose. You play a 7 here, followed by a 7 from this guy. This guy is going to go ahead and play another 7, and a 9 is going to pop out from this guy. He can choose to pass if he wants, but he thinks he's going to go on one more. Unfortunately, bam, he put another one out, which has a plus 1 symbol. I believe that just gives a plus 1 to the other types of monsters on the field that are like him. And uh, this guy can go ahead if he wants and play one more. Does he want to do that? It's dangerous. I think he'll go ahead and pass, in which case this player is going to be the winner and score points for the round. This is going to give him uh, one point, and this one one point. The next is going to simply start again. You're going to get three more cards, and you guys can just keep playing until you want to choose a winner here. Uh, maybe you want to do a best of four, best of five, and there we go. Here we go. So we got now we got this guy. He's going to start. Go ahead and start first. He'll play his nine out here. Loveless the dispel, displeased disease, chocolate outlaw. Uh, followed by an eight from this guy. Here we have a seven, and then we're going to go ahead and drop a four here. Let's go for a six, and then we'll go for a five. It's getting dangerous here. How about a five here? And then, oh, nine limb Jim pops out and draw cards from your opponent's this card until you have nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all he can draw. But that's going to give him a hand advantage for next round. And that's the basic idea of the game. Eventually, somebody's going to score enough points to win the entire game based on the, it's the set decision made. It's something you made at the beginning of the game, and whoever is able to do that is the winner of the game, Monster Card Boulevard. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so a couple caveats. The first thing, I, I did a little mess up here, is actually, are they Monster Slayers? Instead of actually going to the graveyard, they're supposed to stay on the field, preventing your opponent from being able to play these types of cards, so they're even a little more powerful than that. There's also more additional Illuminati cards in the decks. Uh, they do a bunch of different things, as well as the fact that there are Monster Slayers for each type of uh, cards in the deck, each type of suit. And there's quite a few suits in the game. Obviously, when you're starting off with the draft, you're going to want to try and make the best hand you possibly can with the deck cards in your deck, but you also don't want to thin out your deck to the point where you're not going to be able to get the cards you want to draw in order to win the next rounds. Choosing to pass is important, but when you choose is even more important. And being able to pull off cards like this Nine Limb Gym here is going to be very powerful as well. The game is a simple card game in which you're just going to be playing cards down and ending when you shall choose to and then drawing up for the next round. Now, what do I think about the game? Well, first of all, the game is simple. It's pretty much explained simple. I think you probably got the entire gist of the game as to how to play it here. Uh, the artwork is 
I like it. It's fun. It's thematic. It works really well. It's really bizarre and like quirky. And I think that's what really gets me for it. I like all the different characters. I like the theme for each type. You've got the circus folk. You've got the werewolves, the full moon. You've got all the different Halloween characters. And then of course there's some comedy involved by basically reading all the different types of uh, characters here. This is like a haunted house. It's Iris, the one-eyed bride. Or you got Fjord, the gourd lord. Or you've got Frankie, fast bite. <laughs> and it continues, right? Fernie, the attorney. But it works well. And you're simply just playing cards. It's a very, very simplistic card game. It's a filler game in which you're just going to be playing in between rounds. Maybe play one round between each of the bigger games if you'd like. And it is fairly simplistic. There's not a huge amount going on in the game as far as like what you want to do. You're going to be pulling three cards to the top of the deck. And you're going to be trying to decide when is it best to pass? When is it best to play? You don't know what your opponent has, but you know the first hand is going to be very, very powerful them to them. And if they choose to keep the cards going forward into the next rounds, you have to be very careful. One strategy I picked up is to allow your opponent to win the first couple rounds in order to hold up a stockpile of cards to which you're going to have a higher advantage in the later rounds. Now that changes with multiple players and it can be... Um more nerve-wracking as to where you want to play and when you don't want to play, and you have to kind of watch everybody. So there is strategy involved as to how you want to place the cards, when you want to place them, and if you actually want to pull Illuminati cards at the beginning of the game into your hand, or if you want to leave them in your deck for later, because then you know that you're not going to get stuck with getting hit by that Reaper dude who takes away all your Illuminati cards. Nevertheless, though, the game's fun. The art's really nice. It's very simplistic and straightforward. It doesn't take a lot of know-how to understand how to play this game, and I think you could probably teach pretty much anybody how to play it. Really, um, one of those games where I would suggest as a filler it's good for a family and it has i guess a little bit of dark themes but i think most kids uh, 13 and up is definitely gonna be fine for the game if this sounds like a game that's interesting to you uh go ahead and check it out in the description below all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter card game review if you like this video go check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it all does help me do greatly appreciate it as well as checking out monster card boulevard in the description below currently on kickstarter you can also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com we're giving away two games one is is Fire of Eidolon. We actually went ahead and did a live play of it this last week, and if you're interested in checking out the live play of how to play the game, it's like uh, Forbidden Island meets an RPG. You can also go ahead and try to back the uh, go for the game Space Base, which is currently by AEG, currently given away on our site as well. Two great games, all in the same place, description below as well. You can also go ahead and check out everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek. They give away even more stuff than I do. I'm only one man, what can I say? All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. And as always, I look forward to visiting the Monster Card Boulevard with you next time.